Okay. Who's ready for stoichiometry? Now, the good news is this is the last stoichiometry unit that we're going to have for a while. We're going to move on to energy and heat after this, so you get a little bit of a stoichiometry break. More good news is that uh, stoichiometry with gases is not hugely dissimilar from stoichiometry with anything else like we've been doing. The difference is that whenever you um, do uh, stoichiometry with gases, the temperature and the pressure make a difference on how everything works out. So generally when we do these types of calculations, we calculate them at what is called standard temperature and pressure, which we abbreviate STP. So what is standard temperature and pressure? Well, the first thing is it is at 273 degrees Kelvin, which of course is zero degrees Celsius. That's the standard temperature. And the standard pressure is one atmosphere. We learned um, earlier this week about the other measurements besides atmospheres. You could also measure it in kilopascals. It would be 101.3 kilopascals, um, which is 760 torr. Atmospheres is by far the most common pressure measurement, but you will see the other two occasionally. If you have a gas at standard temperature and pressure, if it's at 273 degrees Kelvin and one atmosphere, then we know the molar volume. And I heard somebody say it. That's exactly right, Peyton, 22.4. The volume of one mole of any ideal gas at standard temperature and pressure is 22.4 liters. Yes. You're exactly right. There's no such thing as an ideal gas. So this is theoretical. Since we have not managed to find an ideal gas in the wild, this is a theoretical measurement your volume will differ based on how far from ideal your gas is. But for the sake of argument, we're gonna use 22.4. We will actually use 22.4 for the entirety of your chemistry class, um, because when you start dealing with non-ideal gases, there are a great number of variables that must be considered that make the problem take, in some cases, the term of your natural life to solve. So, I'm gonna show you first how to convert moles to volume. The process is very, very similar to the stoichiometry that we've been doing so far. So let me give you a balanced chemical equation. Somebody refresh my memory when the G is in parentheses, what does that mean? Yeah. Emily, go ahead. It's in a gaseous state, that is exactly right. It's one of those things that is not going to affect our calculations, but we are gonna specify its gas since we're dealing with gas stoichiometry. It won't make any difference to us in high school chemistry. If you work in a chemistry lab, it will make a difference. So Emily, pay attention for whenever you work in a chemistry lab. Mm, I bet you will. I have faith in you. So here's our question. If two moles of hydrogen react with excess oxygen, 
what volume of water is produced? And we are gonna specify that we are using standard temperature and pressure. So I've got two moles of hydrogen, mix it up with some oxygen, more than enough oxygen for the reaction. What volume would it be? Now this problem is very, very simple to do without even writing out an equation. If one mole of any gas is 22.4 and we've got two moles of a gas, yeah, we expect the answer to be two times 22.4. So we know the answer is gonna be 44.8. One mole is 22.4, so two moles would be 44.8. But I wanna walk you through the calculations. It's a lot easier, I think, to wrap your head around the calculations when you know what the answer is gonna be. So we start off with the thing that we were given, which was two moles of hydrogen. So two. And we're gonna do 0 .00. Um, the zeros don't affect the number, of course, but we wanna keep the 0 .00 in there so that whenever we get to the end, we have the, exactly right, the correct number of significant figures. So we start off with two moles of hydrogen. Now, one of the questions that you asked me earlier, Ellie, is how do you know what to write next? How do you know what we're gonna, um, multiply by what units we need to have, all that kind of stuff. So let's go back up to the question. The question says, what volume of water, water of course is the 2H2O, that part on the end, what volume of water is produced? So my answer is going to be, actually I should take off the two, shouldn't I? Because water is just H2O. My answer is going to be in what unit? volume of water, liters of H2O. So I'm gonna multiply by some stuff and on the end, I'm gonna have liters of H2O. Okay. So if I start off with two moles of hydrogen, I want to multiply by something that's going to cancel out my two moles of hydrogen. So I'm gonna multiply by something over moles of hydrogen. I know I'm gonna do that because I want the moles of hydrogen unit to cancel. Well, in this chemical equation, how many moles of hydrogen do I have? I have two, that's this coefficient right here. I have two moles of hydrogen. So two moles of hydrogen. I'm trying to make my answer in uh, H2O. So I want the top to have H2O of some kind. This is moles of hydrogen. Let's compare it to moles of H2O. How many moles of H2O do I have in this equation? Also two. So two moles of hydrogen and two moles of water. That's my ratio. What that's gonna do for me is it's gonna allow me to cancel out moles of hydrogen and moles of hydrogen. And I will be left with, if I stopped right here, moles of water. I don't want my answer to be moles of water. I want my answer to be liters. So I'm gonna to have to multiply by something else. I want to cancel out the moles of uh, water at the top. So I'm gonna multiply by something that has moles of water on the bottom. Since I want my answer to be liters of water, let's do liters of water on the top. And so now I want a ratio, how many liters of water would there be 22.4 liters for every one mole of water. And this is going to allow me to now cancel these units, moles of water and moles of water, which would leave me with liters of water as my unit, liters of water. Now, the only thing left for me to do is the multiplication, two, times two divided by two times 22.4. Well, two divided by two is one, so I can cancel those out, and I'm just doing two multiplied by 22.4, which, as we suspected, is 
That seem okay? Let's do the exact same chemical formula. Let's just stick with gaseous hydrogen plus gaseous oxygen produces gaseous H2O or steam. Hmm? You're being a raw gabbit. Okay. Oh, and my answer was 44.8 because I needed three significant figures. 2.00 is three significant figures. So my answer has three significant figures. Let's say I've got five liters. Okay. We're doing liters this time instead of moles. I've got five liters of oxygen reacting with excess hydrogen. Excess hydrogen just means more than enough hydrogen to react with all that oxygen. We're assuming that oxygen is the limiting reactant instead of hydrogen when we say that. What volume of water is produced? At standard temperature and pressure. So we start off with the one piece of information we were given. We were given five liters of O2. So we do 5.00 liters of O2. I want to do some math stuff and end up with a volume of water. So just like the last problem, I want my answer to be liters of water. So I start off with liters of oxygen, I want to end up with liters of water. So the first thing that I need to do is multiply by something that will cancel out my liters of O2. What is a ratio I could do that has liters of O2 in it? Well, how many liters of O2 does my chemical equation give me? One, because the coefficient here is one. Let's just relate that straight to liters of uh, H2O, uh, dihydrogen oxide. How many liters of water do I have for each one liter of oxygen? Two. Well, hey, that's going to cancel out the liters of oxygen. And that's gonna leave me with liters of H2O, which is what I wanted. I think we're done. I think I left too much space here. Yes, I have to do five times two. Use a calculator if you need to, kids. 37. 37 is correct. No, it's not. That's it, 10. Okay. Oh, okay. So I can explain that using math. If I had two times two divided by two, am I allowed to cancel all the twos? Can I cancel all the twos? No, I can only cancel, cancel a pair of twos. It's two over two is one. In the same way, if I had like grams of hydrogen over grams of hydrogen times grams of hydrogen, hydrogen over hydrogen cancels because that's equivalent to one and I'm still left with grams of hydrogen. 
Yes. Is it urgent? Sorry, everybody, she needed help finishing her French braid and I'm sort of an expert. Hey, uh, let's try a new equation. Just kidding, it's the same one. See, I got jokes. This is the last time we'll use the water equation today. Unless you get stranded on Mars. I believe this is how the Martian created water as he combined the two gases that he had access to to create steam and then allowed the steam to condense to create water. So this time we're gonna have oxygen with excess hydrogen but we're gonna do the measurement in grams. This is the one that's gonna require the most amount of work because you can't do simple calculations with grams like we can with moles or liters. Actually, the only reason we could with liters is because it was at STP. If it's not standard temperature and pressure, then you can't do a, you can't go from liters to liters like we did on that last problem. But even if it's standard temperature and pressure, grams are our problem child. You cannot just convert from grams to grams, or in this case, from grams to liters. You gotta turn grams into moles. So we're gonna convert grams into moles, then we're gonna convert moles into liters. Grams to moles, then moles to liters. And just like every other problem we've done, we start off with the given. We were given 8.50 grams of oxygen. We want to do some math stuff and end up with the same thing we've done in the last two, volume of water. So we want to end up with some liters of H2O. So when you have grams, the first thing that you want to do is convert it into moles. So how do I convert 8.5 grams of O2 into moles? Well, I'm going to multiply by something that has grams on the, of O2 on the bottom so that the grams of O2 unit will cancel. If I'm converting from grams to moles and I have grams on the bottom, that means I will have moles on the top so that I will be left with moles. So if I have one mole of oxygen, one mole of O2, how many grams is that? So this is where I need the periodic table. I need to know the molar mass of oxygen. 16 for one, but this is O2. So 32 grams of oxygen per mole according to my periodic table. So what this is gonna do is cancel out my grams of O2 and leave me with just moles of oxygen, which is great. So this one calculation is gonna give me moles of O2. Now that I have moles, I can do a very simple uh, conversion from oxygen to water, which is what I want. I want water. So I'm going to multiply by something else. I want to cancel the moles of oxygen and instead be left with moles of water. So to figure out what the conversion is, we go up and look at our uh, original balanced equation. How many moles of O2 did we have in the equation? One, because we've got a coefficient of one right here. Two, how many moles of H2O? Two. So what this multiplication is gonna give me is moles of H2O. When I take the moles of oxygen and I multiply by that, it's gonna give me moles of H2O. Actually, let me, 
that looks confusing. At that point, I will have moles of H2O. I'm really close. I don't want moles of H2O, I want liters of H2O. So I need to convert moles to liters. So I'm gonna multiply it by something that will cancel the moles of H2O and in its place leave liters of H2O. And this comes from our uh, magic number we wrote earlier. If we are at STP, which the problem says we are, one mole has 22.4 liters. So let's go through and make sure that our units canceled like we expected. We know the grams of O2 canceled. Then we canceled moles of O2. Then we canceled moles of H2O. And that leaves us with liters of H2O as our only unit. And so to figure out the number, we do 8.5 times 132nd times two times 22.4. Or I think probably an easier way would be 8.5 times two times 22.4 and then divide that answer by 32. And how many significant figures are we gonna want? Three. My calculator says, I got 11.9. Is that what you got? When you multiplied that out, did you get 11.9? Did I do something wrong? I got 11.9. Yeah? No. 11.9 liters. H2O. Hmm? Sounds like the notes are wrong, or else I multiplied wrong. 11.9. I believe if the notes got a different answer, that they are going to have to uh, defend themselves against my even better, super cool notes. Okay, let's do one more of these. This time, I promise, not the water equation. Let's do an aqueous solution. Mm -hmm. We're about to get crazy, kids. We're reacting a gas and an aqueous solution to get an aqueous solution. Do you recognize this aqueous solution? It is ammonium sulfate, very good. You are so smart. So um, I want to make a whole bunch of ammonium sulfate. I wanna make 1500 grams of it. So my question is, how many liters of NH3 are needed at STP? All of your problems are gonna be at STP, but we're still gonna write it. To produce 1500 grams of ammonium sulfate. Needs who? Well, the only number we were actually given was the 1500.0 grams of ammonium sulfate. I'm going to use the um, I'm going to use the 
term ammonium sulfate because that writing AS for ammonium sulfate will take less time than NH42SO4. That's why we named it ammonium sulfate. So we have 1500.0 grams of, I'm just gonna say AS ammonium sulfate. And I wanna do some math stuff and end up with what? NH3 which is ni nitrate, some kind of nitrate. It's like hydrogen, hydrogen sulfate plus nitrate equals ammonium sulfate. Sure. You were gonna ask me something, but now you're not? Yeah, I remember it. Oh, great, happy to help. Okay, so since we have grams, what's the first thing that we should do? Hmm? Convert to moles, good. So I'm gonna multiply by something that's gonna have grams of ammonium sulfate on the bottom and moles of ammonium sulfate on the top so that the grams of ammonium sulfate will cancel and I will be left with moles. So what I need to know is the molar mass of NH42SO4. So I will tell you what the number is, but I want you to explain to me how you would find the number. How many um, nitrogens would I add? Two nitrogens. How many hydrogens? Eight. Very good. How many sulfurs? One and then four oxygen. And it turns out the molar mass of that is 132.08. The only part of that that I think is tricky is the hydrogen. It's eight hydrogens with two nitrogens. The two subscript goes to both of those, kind of like distributor property. Mm -hmm. So one mole of that stuff has a molar mass of 132.08, which you would get by going to your periodic table and adding up all those elements. Cool, so that's gonna give us, when we're done with that calculation, moles of ammonium sulfate. But what I actually want is um, nitrate, NH3. So my next step is gonna to be to convert moles of ammonium sulfate into moles of NH3. So let's multiply by something that's gonna get rid of the moles of ammonium sulfate and instead give me moles of nitrate. To figure out this conversion, we go um, up to our chemical formula and we see how many um, moles of NH3 are in the formula. Two, that's the two coefficient right there. Two, how many moles of ammonium sulfate? Just one, good. So this calculation is going to give us moles of nitrate. Once we have moles of nitrate, we're home free. We want our answer to be liters of nitrate. So all we got to do is convert from moles to liters. Since we know they are at STP, we know exactly what the volume of a mole would be. We want to cancel the moles of NH3 and be left with liters of NH3. So one mole of NH3 is how many liters? 22.4. So let's make sure everything that cancels is, uh, that's supposed to cancel, cancels. So grams of ammonium sulfate and grams of ammonium sulfate will cancel. Moles of ammonium sulfate and moles of ammonium sulfate will cancel. Moles of nitrate and moles of nitrate will cancel. And we will be left with just liters of nitrate, which is what we wanted. So the last thing for us to do is the actual math. So we'll do 1500 times two times 22.4. That was not a smart color for me to pick to highlight, too dark. 1500 times two times 22.4 divided by 132.08. And 
and I got 508.782556. How many significant figures should my answer have? Fifteen hundred point zero has how many digits? Five. So I need five significant figures. Final answer then would be five hundred eight point seven eight liters of nitrate. God bless you, my child. Is that helpful to you, Ellie, for seeing um, how to know what units to put on top and bottom? Yeah. yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Easy questions for your non-chemistry chemistry teacher? Like how to spell chemistry, perhaps? I can handle that one, maybe. K-Y-M-E-S-T-R-E-E, -E, chemistry. I'm pretty sure that's right. I think you're right. I mean, I see you shaking your head, Rachel. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's right. Mr. Taylor. I think you spelled I think I nailed it. Yeah, Rowdy's got it on his screen. Exactly right. Nailed it. Thank you for confirming. Any questions? I haven't confirmed nothing. I'm just saying that I think that's the way you spell it. How do you spell chemistry? 